there guys, it's Ben, and welcome to my video. I'm currently on a backcountry road in Utah. Why am I in Utah? Well, I'm traveling of course, but not just through Utah though. I'm attempting to see most of the United States. Since the new year, I left home in Southern California, packed up my life, went full nomad, and have been letting the road and the wind dictate where I'll end up. And no, I'm not traveling alone. Say hi to Pearl, my white 2016 base model front wheel drive Jeep Patriot my trusty companion, and I call her by another name, Home. Yes, she is my very tiny, cozy home on wheels. I spent six grueling weeks without any carpentry experience during the summer of 2020, designing and building Pearl into a tiny home to house me, the little possessions I own, and the necessities to sustain life. And for several years, leading up to my ultimate departure into the unknown, I've adopted a very minimalistic and spiritually driven life, which has allowed me to finally wake up and practice witnessing, embracing, and not judge myself, to love more, and begin cultivating a path of healing and clarity in my life. And I found it was my calling to leave behind my old self and what was familiar by making a huge transition and begin a new journey, which has led me this far. For the longest time, I've been interested in tiny spaces, mobile dwellings, sustainability, and primal living. All things the humans of this world should adopt more and more as we head into a very unstable future for Mother Earth at the rate we're going. So that brings me to Pearl, my way of practicing what I preach. I was motivated to take that last mental hurdle towards a dream by a guy named Brian. He is the owner of an amazing multimedia design company called Matic. We are Matic. He allowed me to use his shop and guidance to finish this project. So thank you, Brian, again. I am absolutely elated at how the build went due to the fact that a Patriot isn't your normal sized SUV. It's much smaller, adding to the difficulty and the uniqueness of this build. I have yet to see a build such as this. So without further ado, and nearly eight months after completion, I am ready and very proud as if I were a new dad to finally unveil and show you the inside of what my Jeep looks like and how I managed to live within this space and officially give you the tour of Pearl the camper. And before we get going, I want to thank the cameraman for his time and energy to be out here filming all of this. So say hi to cameraman. Cameraman, say hi. All right, we'll start in the back or what I call the cook station. Let's go. All right guys, so we start in the back. Uh, so this is where I made my kitchen, my dining area, and even an editing bay and a chill station uh, for some downtime outside. So the, it's a very simple and functional system. It consists of two sliding tables, a drawer to house a refrigerator, and a kitchen shelf to house your essential cookware and kitchen supplies. All right, let's see how this works. I have two tables, one short table, one prep table, and one long table, one cook table. And they both slide out. So you'll see these red and black tabs. You'll just simply pull them, pull them out, and there's your table. No hassles. On the long cook table, pull that out as well. It's a little bit longer. This one's a little bit sturdier, so I'll do most of my, my work on here, and then I'll cook on this guy. On the lawn table, being a photographer, I have a tripod. I might as well use it for another reason, right? So I use that tripod and stick it under this long table, just for insurance to prop it up. And then from there, as I am beginning to cook, I'll go grab my stove, my big Camp Chef Everest, and plop it onto this table right here. And then to sit, I will grab my camp stool and place it right in front of these tables. So I can just chill, read, cook, eat, and do whatever I need outside. The table slides in and out very easily, and it goes in just as easy. So, boom, easy. Hidden away into the platform to be used again later. So let's check out my refrigerator. I have a Dometic C3 
CFX3 45 liter in here. It is powered by Jackery Power Bank, which I'll show you later. I love having fresh produce on the road and this holds plenty of food for just one person. So this has been an incredible luxury to have as I'm traveling. It's sitting in a drawer with drawer, uh, 200 pound drawer slides, so the weight has no issues. And just like the tables, the drawer slides in and out super smooth. So I'll demonstrate right now. I have this locked in uh, as I'm driving, so I have it latched up with some paracord. paracord. Super easy, you just undo it on the side and let that go. And then the drawer is free to slide. In and out. Open up the latch, grab what you need, close it back up, and then slide it back in. Super simple. Then in front of the refrigerator, placed perfectly in between this little space, is two utensil holders stacked on top of each other. That's typic you'll typically find where uh, my utensils, my spatula, things to cook with, my knife. Uh, as being Asian, I have my, you know, this sass ready to go. Got some olive oil and some sponges right in front. So, and this, again, fits perfectly in this little spot here. Nice and snug. And then as we go up top, we'll find my kitchen shelf. This is typically where I'll put my pans. I, ha I, I usually hold two pans, both cast iron, uh, and then some other kitchen supplies up here. So I just can, everything's in reach, uh, everything's efficient to use, and I can just grab and go as I, and get cleaned up super quick as well. So before we move on, I wanna make note and point out why it looks so funny on this outer edge of this bulkhead on both sides here and even up here. Uh, that's because I was trying to match the contours of the back hatch here. And this feature continues throughout the rest of the build. But the rest of the build, it'll be unnoticed and covered up by things. This will be the most obvious uh, portion of it. So, the reason being, if I did close this hatch, it'll become so close to this edge that it will barely fit a piece of paper in that space between this edge and when I close the door. That's how much space I filled. I utilized every single inch of this, of this car because I had to. And that's what added to the difficulty of this build. Uh, it, le it left me con in total confusion and frustration every single day as to how I would accomplish this and yet I made it happen. So that's why I am so proud of what I built here. Well, this is my kitchen setup. It's simple, efficient, it's methodical, at least for me and my purposes and how the car is actually structured. And everything is in reach, which will be a re reoccurring theme throughout the uh, Pearl, as you'll see. So the only downside though about this system is that I am localized to having to cook outside all the time. I can't cook inside for obvious reasons. So, obviously the downside of cooking outside, it has to be good weather. Like right now, I can cook whenever I want out in sunny days like these. But when it's harsh weather, when it's windy, rainy, snowy, any other thing except sunny, then we have a problem. I just flat out can't cook. So, it is what it is. I just have to deal with it and figure out a way and adapt at that point. Or just not eat. Who knows? But let's move on and let's see my garage. Let's go. All right, garage time. How do we access the garage? We have to take out the tables first. So we slide the tables all the way out as such. Tables slide all the way out and you just put them on the side nice and neat. Pull out the other one as well, nice and easy, and place them on the side. And now all we have to do is just take off these covers. Oh hey, what's up guys? 
So here's another example of taking advantage of all the space. This is where the spare tire was supposed to be housed. I took the spare tire out and placed it on the roof now. And that means I can use this compartment to store extra gear, outdoor equipment, just things I don't necessarily need to have all the time. But having a place to put it is just prime. So these rabbit holes and covers were made with a combination of a CNC machine and a fancy CNC handheld router. Um, I etched a rabbit into this one for symbolic reasons obviously. And I etched a deer in this one. Because deers are dope. These cutouts, these holes essentially, are just easy ways for me to take the covers in and out and off and on so so pearl's garage consists of two halves the left side would be used for more or less like non-immediate items nothing that i'll necessarily need super quick and have to take out super quick the reason being to reserve that for that that this hole for that reason is because i have to take the table out i have to move the drawer out of the way and it just takes time so I leave those kinds of items on that side, like like maybe a skateboard, rain boots, uh, maybe a backpack or two, some jackets. It just depends. And then on the right side, this hole, this will be the main compartment. Uh, this is where I'll put like a large storage box and shove it in here and then use that as organization to put all my outdoor gear uh, and outdoor equipment, like rock climbing shoes, water filters, just things, just a bunch of things that I'll need, fire equipment, axe, knife, uh, maybe a blanket, uh, I'll stuff it in this side. And then on this side, I don't necessarily need to have the table come out. I could just push the table just a little bit farther in and then I can still access somewhat the things I need. So it's an efficient system and it allows for me to use the space to its full capacity and I could put things in here and put things out of the way so I can uh, declutter some of the car. The car is already filled up with a lot of things. So being clean and organized and having a place to, to kind of sweep it under the rug is a cool thing to have. So before we move on, you'll notice on my far left and my far right on this side where my elbow is, you'll notice holes, pretty substantial holes, especially that, that side. These guys are where the wheel well kind of protrudes out and it's just an awkward place to put things but it's space nonetheless and they're pretty big spaces especially where the where you put the gas in that side uh, that's where I put mostly like car equipment stuff emergency equipment so like a, a jack air compressor a jumper system just for emergencies and you never know and on this side, well, funny enough, this side, I haven't really utilized this side much because I messed up on the cut. I didn't, I didn't realize the placement of the cut and where I was gonna place the hole until after I cut the hole. Uh, so the hole is pretty large, but I didn't realize the platform was gonna get in the way. So it's just a space that might be wasted, but uh, you can still put small things in here, uh, like for now I've shoved the master cable lock in here. I don't know, found a, it needs a home for it. So, and funny enough, I took care of these areas so much so that I actually made cut out floors for them out of wood and carpeted that piece of wood so that the equipment or whatever I was going to put inside of them can have a little nice soft landing for them uh so yeah anyways let's close up the garage and head on inside to pearl and check out the meat of the build starting on the right side of pearl with this big old shelving unit all right guys let's head in let's go now before we head into pearl let's open up the living space a little bit more so I'm just going to simply adjust the chairs, slide them forward, 
fold the chairs forward, and then I'll see you right inside. Welcome to the inside of my Jeep, guys. So my build was split up into two halves, the left side and the right side of the car. Let's focus on the less chaotic side for now, the right side. And you'll see next to me is the shelving unit. It may look like a simple shelf, just from the aesthetic of it and the outside, but it's deceivingly not so because of the construction of it. The face of it you see is just simple three holes three shelves nothing too serious and too crazy right but it's the side that you don't see it's the other side where it's just complete frustration and anger on my end when I was trying to conceive of this um, unlike a regular build maybe like a larger vehicle like a sprinter you're allowed to think you're allowed to box things out so initially before i started the build i took out all the pla most of the plastic paneling out of the car lining the walls the floor the chairs the seats and stuff like that all the plastic is pretty much stripped out of the car at this point and what you are left with is not right angles not straight lines not unicorns and flowers what you're left with is lots of deviations and undulations and weird contours and dips and valleys. That's what you have. And my job was to, again, save all the space I can and use it. So the plan was to create the bulkheads, this guy and the one I'll show you later, to fit the car in a way where I could still, you know, sleep and do whatever I need to live in this car comfortably. So, the shelves, as you'll see, rides the wall in a way that the contours are matching again, just like what I showed you earlier with the fridge. It's right in the contours of the wall. It's right in the contours of the ceiling, contours of the flooring, as well as the door here so everything is matched everything is fit perfectly against the wall it really is bananas how i got this thing to be real another question you're probably wondering is how is this in place is it bolted to the wall is it bolted to the car is it bolted anywhere um no i didn't drill any holes in the car uh the reason being i may want to resell this car in the future so everything especially this guy is pressure fit into place against the wall perfectly uh, and then the platform kind of sandwiches and squishes it against the wall and just pressure fits it into place so this thing is solid and not moving anywhere with that said this unit just holds uh, a plethora of things that i own uh, so for instance this first shelf right here is mainly just for books and journals and maybe a DVD or two um, and then the one next door the little bit bigger one uh, it works in conjunction with the kitchen so I use that as a another kitchen shelf so I put my bowls my cups my tea dry goods things like that spices uh, just the normal things you'll find in a kitchen shelf and then as we go up to the top, the big boy, where the window is, you'll find usually just clothes that I can't fit into my regular closet. So usually that's like larger jackets, uh, cold gear, winter gear, stuff like that. Then if I change the angle coming from the shelf down to here, you'll see kind of another box here for some reason. It's a hidden storage unit. So this cubby is capped. Just take the cap, pressure fit, put it aside, and you can put more essential things in here. For instance, I have my, my fan just in case it gets hot, maybe at night or something. I could just clip this to the, to 
the handle here. So yeah, just another space I can utilize. The cap just goes straight back on, nice and smooth. And again, this portion of the, the shelf is angled and contoured <clears throat> to the car, as well as the threshold of the door, as you'll see. I'm again really proud of how this all turned out and how it came into reality from my head to drawings on paper and then now it's here. Um, this was, especially this one, was the one portion of the build that never deviated from the drawings that I made initially on my notepad. Um, so that's why, you know, it's, I, it's near identical, uh, as oddly shaped as it may be, it turned out just right so that's good and one more detail that you may or may not have noticed I've carpeted all the surfaces that may or may not have something be placed on top of it with cheap Home Depot navy blue carpet mainly just for protecting the wood as well as color and aesthetics so now let's move on to the meat of the build, the main bulkhead on the left half of the car where you just saw the fridge was on. You're going to now see the rest of it. Alright, let's move on over and let's check it out. Alright folks, we're moving along. So now we get to see the organized mess on this left side of the car. To give you some build details. This took the longest to draw up and conceive because of the fact I needed to fit so many things on this side for reasons being efficiency of use and being still making the space very comfortable. I needed to figure out the placement and the spacing of each item that I was going to bring in without having the items physically with me. Funny enough, I bought all the equipment after completion. So I relied mainly on specs I pulled from the websites. I wrote them down and then used those measurements to start measuring out the actual bulkhead. And at the end of the day, I just hoped and prayed when I was done that everything would be fitting comfortably in its new home. So yes, I like to live on the edge a little bit and take some risks. Moreover, this portion of the build was constructed inside this space. I could not have built it outside and then brought it in due to the measurements of the car versus the actual shape of this bulkhead. It just wouldn't have worked. So I had to develop a system to build this in parts in a very particular order. Unfortunately, it's not modular in the sense that I can you know, deconstruct it and take it in and out and restore the car to its normal state but maybe next time I can design it in such a way so for now this build is stuck in here forever this bulkhead is composed of five sections you've already seen the refrigerator side now we get to see the rest of it that being composed of an outer section this middle portion and then the inner and then we got the closet up top. We'll focus on the outer for now. Again, you'll see that the construction is very similar to the shelving unit on the right side. It follows the contours of the, the car, the wall, and the door, as well as the ceiling. These two shelves and this cubby mainly store primary need items. So this shelf up top will house my Camp Chef Ever stove, and it'll be locked down with these carabiners and paracord and it'll also store my shovel and maybe toilet roll or a propane tank and then maybe a roll of duct tape just in case. And as we move down to this guy next to the wheel well, this will typically have my detergent or hand sanitizer and maybe a hydro flask. But mainly it's for the home of my fire box or my ammo box. So in the, inside the ammo box would be just like fire starters things of the like, uh, backpacking stove, fuel, things like that. So that'll be right there. And then as we move down into this open air cubby, you'll typically find my, you know, things that I'll just need to grab real quick. 
as I open the door. Like my camp stool, I can just grab it out. My pee bottle, yes I have a pee bottle. Grab that, extra propane, I'll stuff it down here. Uh, maybe an ax, if I had to make a fire real quick and chop up some wood. Uh, maybe my nata tool or a machete, just in case. Uh, just things like that, it'll always be cycling through just different items as I go, depending on where I'm at and what I'm trying to do. So next door will be my middle section. This is where I house my seven gallon water tank, which is plenty of water for just one person like me. Uh, it'll last me more, maybe a week or more. And it's held in place with, again, a paracord and carabiner system. So if I wanted water, I'll just unlatch it and then pull it out, grab some water, and then push it back in and latch it up. Easy. And up top, you'll find a kind of a shelf or a cubby. This is where I keep my drugs. <laughs> no, not drugs. Up here I keep my vitamin box. Just a box with vitamins and personal care items, essential oils, things like that in this little box up, up, up here. And you'll notice that the shelf actually is not attached and nailed down. The reason being, when you go to refill this uh, tank, if the shelf was locked in and can't get out, and I was trying to grab this out, I'd have to slide it all the way out and then grab it out. And then the same thing as when I put it back in, I would have to put it at the same 90 degree angle and shove it in the same way. With the removable shelf, I just take this out and then the departure angle is a lot easier. I could just lift it up instead of lifting it out. I lift it up, take it out, refill it, bring it back, same thing. Just slide it back in nice and easy. And then I will replace like that. It's just the ease of bringing in and out the tank if I went to go refill it. Also, you'll notice that the tank isn't entirely sitting on a flat surface. Part of it is overhanging over a kind of a step. Reason being, if I were to unlatch it and wanted to get some water for maybe a pot or my bottle, all I have to do is just pull it out and it'll fall naturally and sit over this edge at an angle. Usually these tanks, you'll have to tip it with like two hands. Obviously, that doesn't fly with me. So, this just naturally falls over the edge. I open the spigot, fill up the water, and that's it. It falls into a natural angle, and I just put it back easy enough. So everything was thought about. So if I switch the angle now, you get to meet the guy that's been powering all of my electronics, my laptop, my cameras, and especially the fridge. This is my Jackery Explorer 1000, and it has been a lifesaver and a huge luxury to have on the road and it's being continuously charged via solar that explains this wire running down the side here and outside the car which I'll get to later but it's sitting in its little home here with a removable cap if this cap was locked in and nailed down moving this thing would be a pain because in front of the jackery would typically be my three or four inch thick mattress at that point I would have to remove the mattress and then start to slowly shimmy this thing out and this is not easy to move, it's very heavy. The solution was to have a removable cap. All I have to do is just take this cap off, easy enough, and then take two hands and just heave it out, out of the door and do whatever I need to do. So, and then bring it back in the same way. So the departure angle, again, just thought about it. It's just a lot easier and more efficient for me. Afterwards, you just replace the cap, nice and easy. So above the jackery, where the cap is, is my kind of pseudo nightstand. So when I go off the bed, I can place my phone and keys and just small items. But for now, it's the home to a very small basket that fits perfectly in this little slot here. And the basket's filled with, you know, personal care items, cleaning wipes, towels, uh, toothbrush, all those things. That'll be placed right here. And all of this empty space was intentionally built and designed. Uh, one, it's cool to look at. It's pretty sick to look at. It's just an empty space with my closet kind of overhanging over here. It's pretty cool, but it's also functional. And the reason I did this is to just open up the living space a little bit more. So it doesn't feel as claustrophobic if I just close it off with walls here. 
So everything has a purpose. I'll also make note that if all this stuff wasn't inside and it was just empty, you'll notice a lot of holes, especially on this bulkhead, just everywhere. Big hole, five holes, two holes, hole, 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 more holes. You're wondering why I cut so many holes out. Uh, for ventilation, that's the main thing. I wanted air to be circulating. I didn't want my electronics, especially my fridge and my Jackery to be overheating. Uh, so, and just preventing condensation is such a key thing in living such a small space. So heat and wetness equal no good. That's basically it. Alrighty then, let's go see where I keep my underwear. Let's go. All right guys, if this doesn't induce any claustrophobia, then you're pretty good, like me. I don't complain much. So we're now at the last bit of this bulkhead, the very tippy top section. This is what I deemed my little clothes closet here. I think it's probably the coolest feature out of the entire build. That's just my opinion, because you can see through it. You can see my clothes, you can see my underwear, you can see my socks, you can see everything. It's wild, but also it has sliding doors, guys. That's what, ah, it trips me out. Initially, my thought was to have like doors that opened either down or up. I realized that none of that would have worked in such a small space. So Brian, he came in clutch. He threw the idea of having, you know, sliders like you would see in like uh, Airstreams. So I was like, yes, that is what I need because it's the most kind of like non-intrusive way to have a door. All you have to do is just slide them open, slide them closed, and they don't get in the way, especially in such a small space where if I did have doors, I would just get hit in the head if I was to open it. And it's just freaking cool to have sliding doors on such a small little space just for your clothes. So I'll show you right now. Front side, open, close, back side, open close that's it it's freaking cool and it's just simply a place I can put my clothes that's what its purpose is and I'm pretty organized about it uh, so for like smaller accessories like socks underwears maybe a beanie gloves things like that I'll put them in these storage boxes so they come in and out super easy just like just like I just did and you just open get what you need close it back up and then put the storage box back in its place so I have two up here the reason I have boxes like these is because you know socks and accessories just get all over the place if you just stuff them in a spot so put them in boxes to get more organized and it's clutter free and it's mess free so I have two up here and then the rest of the clothes is just the rest of the clothes is just uh, folded neatly tops and bottoms, and that's about it. That's my closet, guys. But, let me show you the cool part of the build. And last little bit about the clothes, just another little Easter egg as well, <laughs> or just my obsession. If you can see, my clothes are very similar to each other in terms of color. Maroon, navy, and white. Those are my power colors, guys. And you have if you haven't noticed, there's a connection between the clothes I wear and the colors I like to the car. The car is painted in those colors. I got the maroon going, I got the white going, I got the blue carpets. Everything is in sync with my love for these colors. So just another detail that I put in here just for myself my pleasure let's change the angle and show you my kind of art piece the kind of cherry on top as you would say of my build the last thing I put together as you can see next to me is this weird little feature right here what is this uh well it's my art piece this is the last thing I put together when I was at the end of the build this is my little angular pyramid feature that I stuck at the end of this uh, clothes closet. Again, it's also see-through, so it kind of ties everything together and also sets the tone for the rest of the build. It's pieced together uh, on weird angles that I had to figure out and cut 
with three pieces of wood and uh, I've been I'm very happy to see it come to life it's very beautiful to look at but there's a reason I made this the shape that it is is because if I were to be entering and exiting the car I won't get clocked in the head this shape helps with that so this angle is directed towards the center of the car as well as from the top to the bottom it slopes downward if I were to maybe make it a box like a rectangle and have it jut out and just straight and 90 degree angles all the way to this end as well on the where the door is yeah I would it would have been lights out for me I would have knocked my head and got a concussion uh, so this shape helps with that uh, just for me to come in and out of the car a little bit easier and not have to hit my head all the time so there's a purpose to everything guys even if it looked beautiful like this okay next up let's get a closer look at the foundation of this build what's keeping everything up and level as well as let me show you how I'm utilizing the space behind the chairs because every space has to be used so let's go now I'm taking you down to the floor. What's the base of this whole monstrosity? What's holding everything up and level? To give you some background, like most cars, when you take the seats out from the back, it's normally not very flat. You will very rarely find a flat surface when you take the seats out. It's gonna be a lot of peaks and valleys and a lot of waves. So usually the first problem to tackle is to create a foundation where it's flat for you to work on. So in my case, I had to make a subfloor and then after, I have to create a main platform, as you can see here. But before all this, I had to design a frame to kind of bypass all the peaks and valleys of the car floor. So that's when Brian suggested that I use steel tubes instead of like two by four pieces for the structure I cracked on and started measuring and started cutting all the pieces and Brian helped me weld everything together. So what was left was a black framework to allow me to place the subfloor and the platform on top. It turned out incredibly well and it's very strong. And you can see kind of a glimpse of it right here. I'll tap on it. This black edge right here and from there I just had to determine the shape and the measurements of the subfloor and the platform and how I was gonna tie it into the black frame I knew there was a minimum height I needed to reach uh, because of the idea with the sliding tables in the back the tables should ultimately clear the back opening and lo and behold it all turned out well as you saw in the beginning so I'll point out really quick here's the kind of the sandwich with my black steel frame and then the subfloor that's carpeted. You can see the carpeted section. And then you'll have the main platform right here, which is the, the nicer wood on top. So that's my little uh, floor sandwich right there. Then as you'll notice, there's these handles here, these black handles and these white fronts. Well, well if you thought they were false fronts and were just made to look cool, you're very wrong. They're fairly large 18 inch drawers built into the steel frame. So this was my first attempt at making drawers of any kind, ever. And I can tell you that I'm very proud of myself, especially because they're drawers that were built into a steel frame, not a wooden cabinet or something like that. I had to make a framework for the drawers to attach to the frame, the steel frame. So in this right one, it'll typically hold my, you know, miscellaneous photo film stuff that I just don't use very often. And you can see it's very large, a lot of depth, and then it's also carpeted as always. And then on this left side, this is where I'll keep most of my fitness gear, jump rope, uh, massage tools, running shoes, things of that nature because you know my body is a temple. And they both have soft closed drawer slides guys. I just still haven't gotten over that. You open it and then if you're angry and just want to slam something without breaking anything, you just do it. Open it again and you just see the magic. 
closes very softly. Open it again. And you just become very peaceful. And lastly, you'll notice this little section right here. It's a skinny cubby. And what I place in it is my fire extinguisher. Because you never know. Before I mention how I utilize the space behind the seats, remember when I pointed out the shape of this little art piece that I made? That also ties in with the rest of this front side of the bulkhead. There's a reason it stops where it does, denoted by this carpet piece here. And you can see on the other side, the floor just keeps going. There's a reason I stopped it here. Some background. I spent a day or two filling up the space here with cardboard boxes to different heights and blocking the door to see and wrap my head around how much room would it take for me to still easily and smoothly enter and exit Pearl without you know clocking my head on the ceiling here or bumping my hip or cracking my shin open as I am entering and exiting the car and look I'm in and I'm out Super easy. In, out. No problems. So where you see me sitting on my stool here is essentially, you know when you go into a front door of a house and you have that room? That's basically what this portion of the car is. This is my front door, my main entry point into Pearl. And this is that space. It also doubles as my kind of living room where I can just sit, relax before bed. I can edit right here when the bed is set up. I can also eat here or just read. But it's not ideal, guys. I'm, I know that for a fact. It's very tight and you can see how cramped my, uh, my legs are. But I make it work and it's just a nice place to sit. Sometimes you just want to sit somewhere uh, out, of the, out of the weather, you know? So typically I like to make this area very clean and empty all the time if I can. Mainly just put shoes and my kettlebell on under the seat here. But that's it. I like to keep this little space clutter free. Nothing here. So I can come in and out whenever I please without having to move things around. And so let's move on to the other side. So now we switch to behind the passenger seat. So there's a lot of space, again, right here to be used. Uh, I don't use this space uh, for sitting or any of that reason, just like I do for the front door over there. But I do use it for a lot of storage. This is where I keep my kind of organized party of items and equipment here. So the way I do it is a very modular system. It's very organized. So first thing, I slip my toolbox in there under the seat in front of that next will be my electronics box just accessories and plugs right there right in front of that box and then as we move to here this little spot right here I will put my portable shower system right there and then next to that right in the spot will be my camera backpack right shoved it right in there and then Behind, directly behind the seat on top of the accessories box would be my portable shower tent. And then when I'm ready to pack up and leave or go for a drive, I'll typically have the second portion of my bed mattress also stacked right here. And then also one of my larger windshield blackout covers. Stuff right in there. So it's all modular and it's all organized in a way where I know where everything is. I can grab it whenever I want without any hassles. And you'll notice how perfect everything kind of fits and meshes together into this little uh, storage compartment as if they were meant to be together. All the items here were accounted for in terms of the height and the width and the way they were shaped uh, to fit in this little spot alone. The reason I mentioned height is because my tallest items in this spot were the portable shower and my backpack. I could say that they're at the perfect height because I can still operate 
the bed platform without getting in the way. So, and as I mentioned the word bed, I'm sure you've been asking the question since the beginning, how the f does Ben sleep in this car? Well, come with me and you'll see in a world of pure relaxation. Hang in there folks, we're almost at the end. This is how I hunker down for the night. I haven't mentioned too much about this section of the platform where it's just flat, but I'm sure it was obvious to you from the beginning that this would be the area that I would sleep on. And you're right. Just like the rest of the build, every item in this car has its intended place and the build was constructed around that object. The same goes for me. I'm that object in question and by no means am I objectifying myself. But Pearl was converted with my body in mind, as I mentioned about the entering and exiting of the car. I'm a tall, skinny Asian dude who doesn't complain much and won't mind sleeping like a sailor. So the bed was built with that intent. At this point, let's set the bed up. The specifications. The subject, a hippie Asian dude with abnormally long hair. Height, five foot. 10 inches, hip width, 14 inches, shoulder to shoulder, 21 inches, sleep style, side and roller, plus the object, bed platform, material, wood, width, 18, 1 quarter inches, platform length, 54 inches, Extension, 20 inches with prop stick. Total, 74 inches. Firmness, hard as Equals, a claustrophobic inducing sleeping quarters for Asian dude. But it works. At this point, once we have a semblance of a bed, we have to make it comfortable, right? The items, custom cut mattress topper. First part, width 18 1 quarter inches, length 54 inches, thickness 3 inches, with custom made cover with zipper, colors to match build. First part goes in. Custom cut matches topper. Second part, width 18 1 quarter inches, length 18 inches, thickness 4 inches, with custom made cover with zipper, colors to match build. Second part goes in, blanket, style, vintage, material, llama wool, wear. Found for 15 bucks at thrift store. Blanket goes on. Pillow. Rolled up blanket in pillowcase. Colors to match build. Pillow goes on. Sleep system. Camp quilt. Company. Enlightened equipment. Material. Down. Temperature rating. Toasty. Colors to match build. Quilt goes on. There you have it, folks. A sleeping arrangement only Jack Skellington can love. And thank you, Asian dude, for demonstrating. Well, what do you think? It's not exactly big, but it's a bed nonetheless. Now let me show you how I climb in. Well, there you go, just like a jungle gym. Just some nimble maneuvering, elite parkour skills, and some spatial awareness, and I'm ready to hit the sack. 
And it gets quite cozy at night too, and it fits me like a glove. It's not as claustrophobic as you may think. If I had my head sleeping on this end, it feels more open over here, and I could still kind of stretch out. Though my legs are a different story. Other than the front portion of my car, which is just your standard driving compartment, I didn't really modify anything else other than adding a dash cam. So that's pretty much all the bells and whistles of Pearl and this camper build. With that said, let me put away the bed and I'll meet you guys outside so I can give you a quick rundown of the party on the roof. All right, let's go. I hope you're hanging in there, guys. Come, follow me to the roof. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Come one, come all. We've got tires, we've got gas tank, we've got solar panels. But in all seriousness, guys, let's do a rundown real quick of the roof. Starting from the bottom and work our way to the top. The rack system. So my Jeep already has raised rails, so I ended up choosing the Thule Evo raised rail feet. And then to match, I got the Thule Evo wing bars. Stacked on top of that, I got the Rhino Rack Universal Pioneer Platform, which is a beast. Right in front of me will be my spare tire strapped on top of the platform, locked down with Rhino Rack tire straps. Next door will be my Rotopax 3 gallon gas tank, locked down with their specific lock as well. Up front, you'll finally see my Renogy 100 watt solar panel. The cables will run down into the car and connect to my Jackery power bank. I chose all these products for one reason, because of their quality and we can rely on them time and time again. Especially this Rhino Rack Universal Platform. This thing is boss. It was probably the only option I could have used to set up this kind of system on top of the roof and take what I need. So Rhino Rack, you rock. Well, it's been fun guys. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a glimpse into my life on the road with Pearl. More so, I hope this sparks some type of inspiration for you and your future build. And maybe, just maybe, summed up the courage to maybe tackle this lifestyle in the near future. Because it's possible guys. I made it happen, and so can you. Well, I'm pretty sure you're sick of me talking at this point. But luckily for you, I'm sick of myself talking too. Less talking, more living, right? If you found any joy, inspiration, knowledge, good vibes, and watch from beginning to end, please go smash that thumbs up and share this video to everybody you know. Your mom, your dad, your dog, your bird, your pig, your friends, everybody, share it. And if you really want to help a brother out, please go subscribe to my channel. I want to make a more concerted effort to maintain this page and create more content. Another thing you can do for me is I really want to hear where your thoughts are. Your questions, your comments about the build, about the video, about anything that you saw. Please go comment down below, ask all the questions, and I'll be right there to reply. Lastly, if you really want to keep tabs on me and seeing where I'm at and what kind of adventures I'm getting myself into, go over to my Instagram page and you'll see all the beautiful photos that I've taken so far at Benjamin Shre, and give that guy a big ass follow. He'll really appreciate that. Pearl and I want to wish you all the incredible blessings and love from the road. Also, don't forget to say goodbye to the cameraman. Say goodbye, cameraman. <laughs> Pearl, say goodbye. Y'all ready to mosey down the road? Well, you heard the boss, lady. It's time for us to get up on out of here. Y'all take care now, you hear? Much love, peace from Ben and Pearl. We out.
but 